everyone. Tooth and Much Tano here, here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of this new HERS Collective record. We're still here. HERS Collective is a Philly based loud rock collective dabbling in everything extreme and underground from grindcore to power violence to hardcore and metalcore. They've been at it for years now, releasing splits, EPs, collaborations, compilations with a uh, hundred songs on them, all with an explicitly pro-LGBTQ message of celebration and survival in the face of systematic oppression and eradication, especially when you consider all the anti-trans bills currently moving through state houses at the moment and public threats to gender-affirming care proposed by recently indicted scumbag Donald Trump. Because of that, you could argue that a collective like hers is more necessary than ever, which is pretty much the message being conveyed on the title of their new project here, We're Still Here. Now, the albums from hers run a bit different than anything else the collective typically releases. They tend to be momentous occasions that are very feature heavy. 2018's Friends, Lovers, and Favorites featured a really awesome list of underground queer music icons. Laura Jane Grace of Against Me, Marissa Paternoster of Screaming Females, also, of course, Sadie Switchblade of Gloss Fame. And now the feelers on We're Still Here extend out even further into the wider world of extreme music and hardcore, bringing on Full of Hell, as well as Soul Glow, Melt Banana, Jeremy Bohm of Touche Amore, as well as Jordan Dreyer of La Dispute, just to name a few. Plus, in addition to that, the collective brings back some familiar faces and continues to build that queer musical coalition with names such as multi-instrumentalist Jessica Joy Mills, Massachusetts noise artist Pain Chain, and again, more. There's a lot of guest spots on this LP. But despite the variety of artists and voices across this LP, the sound is really consistent. The flow is very cohesive, track to track. Really, this thing is a non-stop 30-minute sonic assault loaded with tight, angular, thunderous riffs that tie up really nicely with some absolutely killer drums. It's music that's fast, relentless, it's crushing, disorienting too, but here and there the collective actually makes time for some pretty epic moments in the track list too. Be it the harmonious group vocals toward the tail end of the opener, we're still here, which is pretty much a statement of existence as an act of rebellion. There's Marissa Paternoster's epic vibrato soaring vocal harmonies on Unicorn Tapestry Woven in Fire. Sweet Like Candy features these down-tuned, sluggish riff passages toward the very end that sound warped and stretched out and are topped with these really uh, hair-raising... Ugh. I hate saying hair-raising because it leads to so many bald comments in the comments. But yeah, demonic vocal layers, uh, considering how massive and disgusting this portion of the song sounds, it's not surprising to hear that the band Thou is in the mix on this one. There's also the grand string layers that soundtrack a pretty heart-wrenching and screamo-tinged uh, closing cut on this record, too. So this LP definitely has its prettier and more harmonious moments, but uh, make no mistake, we're still here is not just like some flowery, ornate album of music. This thing is looking to crush heads and make points. Burn Your House Down, for example, is soundtracked with these muscular, just bone-crushing riffs, which soundtrack a righteous and angry screed about affordable housing, or the way housing can be abused as a commodity and used essentially to keep people poor and struggling. There's Last King meets Last Priest, which pretty much throws out imagery of uh, capitalists being hung by the guts of bureaucrats. Public service announcement pretty much uh, calls for listeners to stop calling the police, saying that they are essentially an occupying force and that they don't make neighborhoods safer, which, I mean, that, that argument could be argued if you uh, want to argue it. And interestingly, Trust the Process uh, takes issue with the pharmaceutical industry. Kind of a snarky response to recommendations by doctors to keep going through medical processes and medication regimens that could potentially be doing more harm than help, be it through a misdiagnosis or just not listening to the patient, which is not too uncommon of an occurrence. Though I should stress, I am not giving medical advice here in this video, thank you. There are some very standout vocal performances on this LP that are pretty memorable, despite many 
many of the tracks going by in a flash. The aforementioned Melt Banana and Soul Glow features on this thing definitely contribute to the chaos on this record in a bold way. I'm not usually a huge fan of the body's trademark shrieks, but I can't deny that uh, uh, they make for one of the more memorable moments on this record. And the song Judgment Night not only uh, has these wailing sax layers that absolutely get my blood boiling on it, but there's actually some cool rap passages on the back end that see, uh, yeah, some very in-your-face and aggressive bars meeting metalcore riffs. Some cheeky rhymes and witty queer affirmations are delivered in the verses. Let me at least put some quick focus on the riffs with this LP, though, because they really are the skeleton and muscle that holds this record together. And they're great. They're stellar. They could really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any modern power violence album. I wouldn't necessarily say they edge out everything else that's out there, but I wouldn't say they have to, because this record does have other things going for it in terms of its lyrics, its refrains, its variety of musical influences, as well as vocal guests, which does bring uh, such an extreme and such a heavy record a surprising amount of dynamics and variety. And yeah, in terms of the riff styles, you do have like some math rock or math core breaks, some breakdowns, some very gloomy passages that border almost on doom metal as well as blast beats, grindcore passages. There's the driving metalcore grooves on a different kind of bed death, which are pretty sick. But yeah, what else can I add in this review other than this is a record that has a lot of ferocity, a lot to say. It's bold, it's ferocious, it's unforgiving, it's lighting everything on fire, it's burning it all down. Ah! Great tight, energized performances, really interesting array of guests, the vast majority of which contribute to the album in really fantastic ways. There are some tracks that are less memorable than others, but I will say I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that uh, it is so fast, it is so hard-hitting, it is so uniformly loud. Some of the vocal contributions in the second half aren't nearly as solid as what we're given in the first. But with all that being said, this album is as aggressive as it is awe-inspiring. I would handily give this thing a decent eight. Transition, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you should check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Hearst Collective, uh, forever.